Hello, hello, and welcome back to yet another beautiful, beautiful season of Racing Vibes with the Robs. And I have joining me today our beautiful, beautiful person and soul, um, the mind behind it all here, Mr. Rob, better known as Lord of Carey. Also, okay, enough of the introductions as, here. Oh, Let's come just, on. Uh, I had the audience waiting for like an applause it. and everything. Let's cut it short a little bit. Oh, uh, don't give me on. a big head here. All right. <laughs> I mean, I already have a pretty big head um, as seen on photographs. If you want to look at someone with a big head, I do have a large head. So compared to other people, it's actually okay. kind of funny. <laughs> me and Paris Hilton's kid. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, All right. Well, that's him. Everybody. Yeah. If you haven't looked at Paris Hilton's kid, go ahead and Google it. Big head. Um, so, basically, we have been away from the mic for, what has it been, a couple months now? A couple of months now, yeah. It, it's it been a while. Um, and when I say away from the mic, I literally mean it because we bought some mics, so you can actually hear us now. You're welcome. The clarity in my voice. Yes. Um, yes. Which is excellent. They... Take a long time to charge, though, so that might be an issue. Oh, my God, yes. If we do cut off, uh, bear with us. and um, We know, shall be back. Yeah, and just kind of <laughs> listen like you used to on the, on the phone. Um, but this should be a more pleasurable experience for you as our Absolutely. supporters and our audience, as the people. And, um, you know, we got Lucy in the studio today. She is napping like usual. <laughs> Um, she had a kind of a crazy week thus far. Today is Tuesday. We took her over yesterday to my father's to meet her uncle, Cat. And uh, her uncle, Cat, is actually a kitty, a, a, a little kitten uh, by the name of Admiral. And cute as can be. Cute as can be, but uh, Lucy kind of had some issues there. So um, She's a spoiled little cat i mean she's highly intelligent of course uh and we will tell you about she's uh, twitching because she knows we're talking about her. <laughs> her stories and um how she pretty much keeps us on our toes but yeah she she kind of shied away from the moment of it all and as happy as i was that she didn't completely you know shy away she was not as uh, hospitable and nice as I thought that she would be. No, she went straight for the bathtub. And she hung out in the bathtub the whole time. And uh, A lot of hissing going on. Yeah. She got as she puffed up like a fur ball and was basically like daring Admiral to come near her. And he did. And there was some hissing, but it was all good. So she is resting now. We got her a new little scratching thing, a new toy. For her pleasure, and she is back to being Miss Lucy again. Miss Diva. So, um, where did we leave off on this podcast? What was the last thing that we talked about? Good gravy. I don't remember all of this. <laughs> um, but I will tell you this. There are a whole lot more subjects and topics to go ahead and... Um, get into in this brand new season season three i promise you this not only is the sound better but so is the quality in our work um this is part of what we have been working on which is the reason why we took that you know little break um and i know that in podcasts before i have said that this is something that i wanted to go ahead and continue doing which I also said that even if there's only one person listening, I'm never going to stop because at the end of the day, this is something that I want to do. So this is me sticking to my word right. and also us going introspectively and try to see how we can get better at not only the work that we do, but our lives and the type of people that we are. So now you get Benjamin 2.0 and Karen 2.0, so you're welcome, people. Well, 3.0, because this is season three. And 3.0. Um, I don't know what Yeah, it is, it is our ultimate goal on this whole thing, on this whole podcast, is going to be to raise your vibes, yeah. to make you feel a little bit better about life, to maybe give you some tools and some tricks to make you feel better about life. And we want to make sure that you know that we're not masters of life. We are not here to say that we're masters of life, but we feel like we have some knowledge of some different ways to raise your vibrations and to really tap into your spirit 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to step into your moment there. <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, no. support you there. Um, but going off of what you were saying, I think that it's very important that we not just throw out content. Um, and that's what we've been focusing on is focusing on our growth, uh, focusing on how we deliver the content, focusing also on the quality and to make sure that we maintain our, our values and our goals when it comes to this, because at the end of the day, like you said, we want to raise your vibes, right? And it's not just by making jokes and making you laugh, although that is part of it, but also to enrich your life somehow with the knowledge that we have gathered by living our lives. Right. And I think a big part of that is, um, is going to be participation from the listeners as well. You know, if yeah, you have people. content that you want to hear, mm -hmm. if you want to be on the podcast, if you want to, you know, like the podcast and share, do that, please. We need Absolutely, it. Absolutely. Please. Um, if you, that be grand. Yeah. If you want to check out, you know, our Instagram pages or Facebooks, um, I've started a new venture called the Sports Shaman. While I will be talking about numerology, astrology, and basically the spirit behind sports. And big, um, big success. As as far as I'm concerned, in my eyes, it's a huge success. And it's not just because of the fact that you decided to do something on your own that has been in your mind and your heart brewing for God knows how long, honestly, but just the fact that you're doing it and people are now starting to catch up to you and starting to respond. And I mean, not to brag or anything, but actual athletes, you know, that are like in sports, not just uh, not to say, you know, non-professional, but, you know, they're also. Yeah, I've had a couple Orlando City players who have liked my videos, who've reached out to me. I've had um, a couple like, you know, decently popular sports like figures as far as like the media goes reach out to me um i'm still very small and i'm still just trying to build on that but there's so many ideas in my head you're where, growing honey you are growing. where i want to take this and um you know i had i had you know paulo paulo vencaro like one of my posts which was huge for me and you know i don't know if it was his media team or it was him but it is his personal account so irregardless he did like something that I put out there, yeah. so I would like to brag on that. Um, You're showing up to the scene little by little. And, and we will be in attendance tomorrow night at the Orlando Magic's home opener, which we're very excited about. Super we're excited. Fortunate enough to have someone uh, actually gift us tickets in a presidential suite. So My goodness. Um, I still that can't was, believe that. That was manifested. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I mean, we have been very blessed to have gotten numerous tickets to events in the mm -hmm. last couple months that have been free. And I think it's just the fact that we're, it's kind of coming full circle, this whole like love of sports that I have. People see it and they say, hey, if, you know, if I'm going to give a ticket to somebody, I want it to be this guy because he really loves it. And, right. you know, I really want everyone to know that I do really love it. And I think you'll see that on the Sports Shaman. I think you'll see that it's deeper than just what you see on the typical sports show or on the typical podcast. Um, it's not just stats. It's not just numbers, but the numbers do mean different things for me. And it has to do with everything from, you know, the way somebody swings a golf club to the way, you know, somebody practices and the way Messi is getting a massage while the other players are being talked to, you know, by the coach or, you know, just different ways that people are using techniques and really the occult in a way to be successful in sports. I think it's going to be cool to tie all that together. Not many have done it. Actually, I really haven't seen anybody who's done it. So I'm going to venture uh, basically to the edge of the earth, kind of like, you know, <laughs> when they were sailing and to sail to the edge of the earth and see what I can, you know, uncover. Um, I'm doing a special 
and, and I, I hate to keep rambling about the sports shaman on this podcast, but I am doing a special actually that's going to be posted tomorrow about the uh, Orlando Magic's 35th anniversary, which is go. this season and how the number 35 does tie in to the uh, to that and what I expect for this season. So. All right, you gave them a little taste. Don't give it all away, honey. I will not. <laughs> Let's keep them wanting more. Yes. But you know what? Kudos to you for doing that. Um, because, like I said, if it wasn't because of you wanting to explore these dreams of yours, and also willing to the your, your willingness to face the fears, you know you wouldn't have had this. You wouldn't be talking about this. The accomplishments that you're, you know, you have already accomplished. Um, and although you say that you're still really small in the game and all that stuff, that's fine. That, that I, I get it. You don't, you don't, you don't want to get that big head of yours there. But at the same time, this is just a starting of a manifestation for you, but it would not have been possible if you had not done the spiritual work to become the person that you are now. Right. And that is my true authentic self. Exactly. And, um, it has not been easy at all. It's been a lot of, first of all, breaking down old habits, um, breaking down that ego that I had about myself and who I was and really getting in touch with that inner child of who I was as a child. And anyone that knew me growing up knows that I was a huge Orlando Magic fan. Mm -hmm. I was a huge sports fan. And I've always been interested in people's spirits. Mm -hmm. And I've always been obsessed with what happens after death. I've always been obsessed with the energies in the environment. I've always been obsessed with the stuff you cannot see. Right. Ghosts. Um, actually, I... I <laughs> This uh, last Friday the 13th, we actually went and got two tattoos, and I actually got a ghost on my right wrist for $13. So spooky. Yeah. It's actually a pretty good freaking ghost. I mean, you, when we're saying ghost, it, it, can you describe it here? Because it, there's a lot of detail that, you know, it's not like a Casper the Friendly Ghost type of... Uh, it just looks like an old school Halloween costume. So something like a sheet that you would throw over, mm -hmm. and then it's got two eyes um, as the holes. So it's really like kind of a, a tribute to old school Halloween costumes, which I freaking love. Yes. I think they're so cool and kind of creepy. Classics, man. At a, in a way. Can't and I hope when people see that, that they're reminded of like just when they were growing up and kind of they can connect with that inner child. Um, you know, that and kind of like, why does he have a ghost on his right hand? Well, you know, I also used to do ghost tours. So, you know, there's that. And it's uh, it's pretty cool to tie all that in. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And you got one yourself. I got myself a little shum shum here. I got the uh, creepy looking, bloody looking uh, number 13 along with a uh, moon. Like the kind of moon that you like to say is the Cheshire cat. Is that? Is that? Yeah, the Cheshire cat moon. So it's, yeah. it's a little a, smile on top. Yeah, a smile 13. moon, yeah. you would say. Um, which we're about to actually have... Um, not to jump around too much, but we're actually about to have the second eclipse now mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, what's the date on that? Do you on remember? On the 28th. On the 28th, we're going to so have... So it coincides with, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure you're already aware, but for whoever is listening and is not aware, it is coinciding with Dia de los Muertos right. and Halloween. So those of you who do not know Spanish, that is Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Which is typically on Halloween, correct? Oh gosh! Or it's on November first. I, I I believe it's like towards the end of I October, it was beginning always, of November. Always on November first. If anybody knows, please let us know. We will also go ahead and do some research on that. But as far as I'm concerned, it's always around Halloween time, but also kind of just um, trickles into November, like the beginning days of November. So maybe like the so first it's a multi day event in Mexico. Uh, well, I'm not Mexican, so I'm not quite sure. Okay. Uh, but what I'm talking about is all of them together. Like, uh, oh my gosh, I think I am pronouncing this incorrectly, but it's Sawain 
um, which is the Celtic version or Celtic version, I should say, oh, wow. of um, Sam Hain, which is how how it is print uh, how it's written S A M H A I N. So, but the way that it's pronounced is Sawain or Sowen, something like that. So, um, don't come at me with pitchforks and, you know, all those things are trying to roast me here. I am trying my best. But yeah, essentially, that's what it is. So, uh, I was kind of talking about the whole entire thing, you know, the Mexico and the Celtics. So, I thought it was just Mexico celebrated that day on that particular day, but it's, it's around the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Hmm. Learn something new every day. Um, we just went to a festival. That's what I'm here for, baby. We just went to a festival on last week on, I believe it was Thursday night. Yeah, Thursday night. Oh yeah. We went yeah. to the to the um, art gallery in downtown Orlando, City Arts, and we went to the uh, to the festival, and we got to see artwork um, from Day of the Dead. We got to see some classic horror artwork. Got to see some uh, a mariachi band, some some performers, some Mexicanos performing. Mm -hmm. and it was very lively. Um, it was very cool, actually, because uh, it was on Pine Street here in Orlando. Uh, they kind of blocked off uh, the, the street there, and it kind of was like a, a street party type of thing. Um, and of course, Mexican food. So it was <laughs> lots of lots of temptation for us uh, being on this keto diet. Um, yeah, we made it all the way through event the event, and then we're walking back to where we parked, and we <laughs> ended up stopping at a pizzeria and eating <laughs> pizza. So a huge pizza, a huge pizza, Bianca pizza, because we were like, oh, we made it through the event without. Um, which those of you who don't know, we're on the keto diet, and the keto diet does not let you eat carbs. So um, we were like, yes, we did not eat any of the delicious Mexican food, which that's like my favorite food is Mexican food. It really is. Um, um, and just as a correction, because I believe that that's the, one of the first things that you taught me about the keto lifestyle is that you are allowed carbs. However, because it's mainly all about fats, um, sugar free and being low carb, you are allowed up to 50 grams, right? Right. Right. Of carbohydrate. But the goal, if you really want to see fast results, besides sticking to it, um, tooth and nail, um, it's just the fact that you must reduce any carbs. Yeah, I, I, gotta, I get in trouble when I put any carbs in because then I get these cravings. So I try to stay you know, away from all the sugar and all of the carbs just to kind of pump up my... Um, my weight loss and to stop with the cravings. Um, but that particular night we just saw too much good food and too much fun and too much great art that we were inspired by to not stop at the pizzeria on the way back and Absolutely. pretty much eat a whole pizza and a tiramisu. I mean, the one thing that I was craving for was actual coffee and nobody around had any coffee. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Latin American culture, people, come on, mi gente, you should know we like our little cafecito even at the evening. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like... Wait a well, minute. Well, this is not Miami. So I just want, yeah, I guess I'm used to that lifestyle still, but good gravy. Anyways, at the end of the day, I got a pizza and my absolute all time favorite dessert, a tiramisu. Are you kidding me? That was like, I was on cloud nine. Yeah. Shout out to uh, that pizza place at Lake Yola. We did not go to Anthony's, but we went to, um, uh, I don't know the name of it. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for you to say the name because I was like, I don't remember. Uh, All I remember it's been is down there for a while. looking at a pizza and smelling it's it. It's been down there for a while. It's right in the Lake Yola area. And I know there's a couple of them down there. but What was the street that it was on? It's on Pine. Remember? Pine? Yeah. So it was on Pine Street. Um, All the way down. like Yeah, it had like, totally red, like this retro kind of style with uh, red tables and... Um, red boots and stuff like that. I so maybe you guys have walked that. by it. Um, I can't believe we can't remember the name of it. Oh no, it's not a cardinal sin. You're fine. They'll, they'll find it if they really want to. Um, but anyways, yeah, we've been getting into the art scene a lot. Um, and that is part 
because partly I should say because of my um, findings and uh, my spiritual work that I have been doing and I have been uh, trying to figure out how to best express myself and I have come to the realization that there are way too many ways to express express anything anger emotion whatever it is that you want to express there's so many forms of expression and i decided to uh, start showcasing that in social media in my social media pages so what we have been doing is we pretty much have been embracing the art scene here in uh, the lovely city of orlando in maitland in longwood apopka here in our backyard in altamont springs and I have got to say it has not only been cost effective, but lots and lots of fun. And I am enjoying every single bit of it. How about you? <coughs> well, yeah, of course. I mean, <coughs> being the slurring. artist that I am um, uh, uh, with my unleash? with my, you know, uh, little little stick figures. Um, I do enjoy <laughs> art quite naturally. Um but yeah, it has been really cool to see art from a different perspective. I feel like I never really got it in a way that I do now. Mm-hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with, um, as you stated, like more of like the spiritual awakening type stuff. And um, you really see what the artist is trying to convey. You, you don't see that, you know, too often. Um, at least I didn't when in my earlier life when I was just looking at stuff. I didn't see the perspective that the artist was trying to to uh you know create there and i'm starting to get into different kinds of art and notice what they're trying to create and kind of know what category it would be under and you know you just think oh that was created and you don't think what like how was it created well what did they use did they use watercolors did they use oils did they use you know acrylics what did they use did they use you know um you know, did they, did they sew stomp it? on the actual <laughs> canvas just to get a specific splatter? You know what I mean? And to me, it's all about just kind of seeing it from the perspective of the artist. And sometimes I think that we kind of forget that art is fun because when you go into a museum or a gallery, it's always shh. Yeah. And like, there is this sense of, oh, I have to look at this picture, like I'm studying for, I don't know, the SATs. And, you know, there's this huge, I don't, I don't want to say unwritten rule, but almost kind of, you know, where you kind of feel like. Well, you you were telling me that, that the galleries are kind of set up that way, that they're set up yeah. for. You know, they're a bigger space, they're nice and quiet, so you will kind of behave yeah. in a certain way and respect the art. And that it makes sense because someone put a lot of time and effort into that. I mean Absolutely. One of the artists was telling us at the uh, arts factory that he which is the Gordon Rogers building downtown, um, that he actually spends like a week, like forty hours just doing one of his paintings. Mm-hmm. And that was like he had like probably a few hundred paintings in there at least. Yeah. Um, and I mean, they were just like classical horror film like characters. So imagine mm-hmm. that, you know, when you see these huge, you know, murals, how long that would take somebody right. um, that's really into the details like that. It's yeah. just crazy. But what I was trying to get at is the fact that a lot of people, either they shy away from going to galleries or those museums because it it does tend to be very overwhelming that, well, I I don't really know much about art. I'm not even going to understand it. Okay. Well, I can just go ahead and put a banana peel and stick it on a, you know, a canvas and, you know, ask for $45,000 for it and boom, that's that. Right. But as we have found out, there are many different forms of expressions and it doesn't all have to be as, daunting if you are looking at it from the perspective of a child and which to me art expression is absolutely nothing but being playful right 
Right. I mean, you, you, you know, if you tell some artists that they might kind of be like, oh, okay, what is she talking about? Because <laughs> they might be like, ah, this is very serious. This is a very serious thing I'm doing here. Well, just because they're taking their work seriously doesn't mean that they're not having fun doing it. And honestly, if you are making art and you're not having fun doing it, why are you doing it then? Right. I mean, we've been to the comedy shows and, you know, with, you know, Helmet's comedy shows and those have been – you know, people having fun. Yeah. I mean, comedy is, I think, a, an expression of art. Absolutely. You know, sports is an expression of art. Yep. You know? um, and, you know, not to plug the sports shaman again, but I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and say that we're going to take a look at the logos and, you know, the art in the logos and what they represent for each team. Yeah. And the colors, what they represent for the region and, you know, what the mascots represent for that certain region. And not just that. I mean, if you really think about it, there are uh, artists that have chosen certain colors to convey a certain feeling so that you can, as the viewer experiencing that, would feel whatever it is that they're trying to get you to feel. So it's the same thing with the sports logo and a, and a, a color scheme, you know, and all that stuff. It's just, it's not viewed as art but there are people out there that are behind a computer and they are telling the computer hey this is my vision go ahead and translate it and i will work around it and boom here is my you know concept art and it gets posted everywhere the mcdonald's arches right. everything so an idea is created out of thin air and all of a sudden millions and millions of people are following that idea to the point to where they're tattooing it on their arms i mean art is really influential we just don't think about those things though yeah uh i mean it Boy, is crazy karen 3.0 has arrived people it is very influential um <laughs> and to go to those galleries and see all those creative works is very um it's very encouraging because it it helps you to kind of think outside the box a little bit and think about your creative mind and what you can do different mm -hmm. and um we even saw you know that gentleman that got discovered at saint augustine and at the at the um at the maitland uh, museum of art the yes at the maitland uh, museum of arts and uh, history um that yeah, that was pretty. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, that was in Manello. That was yes, that was in the Manello. Um, now we've been to so many galleries. Now everything's kind of like smushing together. But um, yeah, one of your favorite uh, pieces there at the Manello, if you actually want to take the reins on this, is all about the gentleman who is self-taught and created beautiful paintings and didn't even believe in his own worth until Mrs. Manello came into the picture and kind of said, listen, the world needs to see your art. And she just continued and continued knocking on that door until the man said, okay, you know what? Fine. You want it? Here. And now, guess what? People get to see the works that this man did and not just that, but get inspired by it. Yeah, and that's the only um, exhibit that is permanently there at the Manilo. Yeah. Um, is that actual gallery from him. So um, It's in our um, social media pages and all of them, actually. So if you want to go ahead and take a look, yeah. please feel free to do that. Um, Something new we got into, too, over the break that we had was a little bit of TikTok. Oh, uh, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, man, you could call me a clock now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we thought it was mainly for, uh, you know, children and, um, you know, dancing. But were we wrong? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I honestly, I want to say I was 100% humbled by the whole entire experience. Because, number one, like you said, I had my preset, you know, way of thinking about how all of this was. Um, and my mindset was very close to it. And on top of that, you started on it first. Then you kind of said, Hey, you know what? I know you're struggling with the Instagram thing, but you know where you, 
you're not going to be struggling at is on TikTok. Yeah. And boy, were you right. Yeah, it seems to be a great plat- platform, first of all, to get followers mm-hmm. and a great platform to just express whatever you want to be expressed in a photo or, you know, whatever it, whatever it might be um, without real judgment. And um, that's what I like about it. I think it's kind of like a judge-free zone. And it's kind of like a way to get cool stuff out there. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of filters on it and stuff, which, you know, can be debatable. And the AI and stuff can be debatable. But it's cool to see people being able to everyone be creative, everyone be their yeah. own artists. And not just that, but I have found that there's more of a sense of community there versus, uh, well, obviously on Facebook, you uh, you already have built your community there because they, it, with Facebook, you start with your friends, yeah. you know, and the colleagues at work and all that stuff. Then on Instagram, it, it seems to be a little bit different but also you know putting in a dash of some strangers here and there tiktok is 100 percent worldwide i mean it's not millions of people it's actual billions of people that are actually going there on a day-to-day basis hour by hour yeah it's pretty cool to have someone from africa like your video yeah and then not only them like it but they message you and say you know like How's it going? And then, like, I made a video for a guy from Africa that plays soccer on my TikTok, and I made, like, a cool highlight video for him, mm-hmm. and he just thought it was, like, the coolest thing. And for me, that's what it's about. You know, yeah. that, that that's what it's about. That's reaching, you know, beyond where we thought we could. It's you connection. Know? It's, it's raising those vibes like we're trying to do. Yeah. It's just making someone feel better. And he's like, you don't understand. It's hard to make it in my country. And I'm like, bro, it's hard to make it in any country these days. Right. I mean, I mean, I know places are oppressed and we're going through wars and stuff, but we have to be that hope. You know, Absolutely. somebody's got to be that hope. And mm-hmm. if we can reach out to people and make them feel better by creating a simple video mm-hmm. for them, that's what it's about. Absolutely. Helping each other out because um, I, I think that this, this saying still rings true today. It, it takes a village and it's yeah. not just to raise your kids. But it takes a village to move forward and to be successful. And that's the reason why you and I are so passionate about every single person that we meet, especially if we find or even make a bond or a connection with you. Because at that point, you're part of our family and we're going to be there supporting you, even though we're not physically there with you, we're going to try to be there physically with you. But even though we're not there, we're we're praying for you, you know, sending you good vibes. Right. We are, um, you know, we're, we're supporting you on social media. We're, when we're talking and, it doesn't and meeting take much to effort people. To go ahead and, and share those doesn't. or to tag them or right. to share a picture with them or whatever you have to do to like help them out a little bit. Yeah. And then you see that coming back to you full force. That's what it's about. You right. Know? And if we can all get on that train of like helping each other out, There is no limit to where this can go for everyone. And I think that's the whole point of what technology technology needs to be. It doesn't need to be about, you know, oppression or somebody driving a car around for you where you don't have to drive the car, you know, or filters or whatever or AI. Mm -hmm. It needs to be about bringing everyone together and making sure that, you know, the lower and the middle class are helped by this you know right. that, that that it's it, it's bringing people up so what you're saying is uh, uh, and correct me if i'm wrong here but essentially what you're trying to get at is technology is what you make out of it so if you want to help somebody then there is the technology to be able to do that um but we can't all just be you know that person that's like oh i want a hoverboard and i want my car to now fly um and not truly care about what's going on around you that at the end of the day is still going to affect you in some way i mean if we if you would have told me back when i was growing up that i'd be able to you know stream on a platform and have somebody in africa watch me live i would have said you're crazy and do that from from a standpoint of i just have a cell phone 
and a Wi-Fi connection. I don't even have, you know, billions of dollars. Right. You know what I mean? And yet, it's, um, yet, yet, yet. We're manifesting that, people. It's quite amazing. It really is. And I am, honestly, I'm very grateful for it. I am grateful for the fact that you have made connections out there um, that have formed into friendships. And TikTok, at the end of the day, for me, has been not just an outlet, but it has been a, a kind of like a magic ball, like a magic eight ball, where I am able to see the beauty in humanity because there have been so many people who don't know me who have shown me support there have been so many people that show me the support without even getting to know me without even you know any of this they just show up um not just that but like the type of content that people put out there for the most part it's it's about their lives it's about them it's about them showing you a side of them that they want you to see so why not take the time to pay a little attention it's not gonna hurt you you know click a little like or put in a little um comment and you know say hey that's that's great i'm so happy for you you know especially if you mean it you know and people have shown their true faces as far as I'm concerned, because my belief is that humanity is good. Well, real recognize real, like we've said before. Right. If you're fake, you know, we're going to see it right away. If you're real, we're going to recognize real. Right. And that's what we see when we go out to these festivals. That's what we see when we go out to these events and we, you know, connect with people. The real ones recognize real ones and we promote them. They promote us. And it's a friendly way of just doing business and a friendly way of, of progressing for right. everybody. Absolutely. And again, I that is a personal goal that I myself have um, because I have this innate ability that I noticed back when I was like, what, 13 years old? And that is to be able to see the good in people and also to be able to see what people need to be able to push them. Um, Again, if it's something that they want. So, well, I, I mean, you push me sometimes exciting. when I don't want to be pushed. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I am your wife. Yes, this is true. <laughs> you do a great job of pushing me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we will be out at the Magic Game on tomorrow. On tomorrow. They do play the Houston Rockets. Looking forward to that game. Um, right now, we are in a beautiful season here in Orlando. Um, the weather is getting cooler. We have some wind. My hat actually blew off. Oh, it was magical. It was like a, a movie moment. Like, I turn around. And if anybody has ever watched Practical Magic, you know how they are like, oh, I'm so sorry. There is a... Oh, no, no, no. What is it? Your your mom's bird is literally right outside our cardinal? window. A cardinal. Oh. A red cardinal is literally sitting outside of our window. How cute. Sorry, guys. Wait, sitting outside? Like, let me check this out. Hold on. He is bright red and... Where did he go? Yeah, that's a male. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we know for those that don't do bird watching, first of all, it will sneak up on you the older that you get. Because uh, all of a sudden, you're just going to be like, where is that titmouse at? Like, what what, what just happened? You know? Um, but you know what? I think I, I was it. the one meant to see it. But if you get over here, right here, yeah, and follow my finger... You're gonna see the red between the green. He kind of, he kind of. Um, oh, I see him. You see him, right? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> He's like, uh oh, a male is coming by. So, for those of you that don't know, my family were very connected to the spirit of the cardinal. We feel like that bird follows us around, and that that is actually a representation of not only my mom but my aunts and uncles who have passed. Um, and as well as my grandmother who has passed um and that it's like their spirit coming back to just pay us a visit um this has happened numerous times with cardinals when mm -hmm. uh i mean whether it be like pecking on my driver's window or whether it be at a time of doubt in my life there's always a cardinal around to remind me that everything's going to be okay and it's crazy to always get that reaffirmation with Absolutely. the cardinal 
Um, and to have it live on the podcast is a blessing for sure, too. <laughs> it truly is. I love so, that. Um, Lucy, stay in here. Don't go after any birds. I don't think we have to worry, though, after your display yesterday. Yeah, that that's uh, we're safe. We're 100% <laughs> safe here. <laughs> I mean, and you know what? We have to give props to Lucy, too, though, because we have been on the keto diet, but we kind of made a little bit of an error in trying to figure out how much we should be feeding our cat, which I think that this is what most Americans do uh, because I have seen a lot of heavy set animals out here. Pets. Yeah, we, uh, we were overfeeding her from the time we brought her home. We did not know it. We were fe feeding her like a whole cup of just dry cat food. Um, you know, we didn't want to do the wet stuff because... For some reason, I've always thought that the wet stuff kind of makes cats a little too, like, rambunctious or whatever. But I have read studies that she said... She doesn't need that. Yeah. I've, I've read studies that have shown that the the wet cat food is is better for kittens. But we, we did the dry stuff because it is cheaper and everything. So, But now we're down to about a quarter of a cup, um, and that's twice daily. And we just feel like that's way better for her she seems to be happier happier i mean she yeah. was she was a little grumpy a little lethargic um and just what maybe after a week or so we started noticing the difference um in her behavior she started becoming a little happier kind of like how we are yeah you know we're starting to move a little bit more and fitting into some new genes for me i don't know about you but for me i'm like Oh, Lord Jesus. Well, my this skinny jeans are now becoming a little, you know, a little loose, which is a good. A little loose. Which is good for everybody because baggy. they were a little tight there for a little bit. Um, <laughs> let me tell you. But, yeah, um, it, it, it is. it has been awesome on the keto. We've also started to do this 5 a.m. club thing where we're getting up at 5 every morning, which has been life-changing. It has. Um, if any of you all have any questions on that. I'm sure we'll go further into it on a future podcast. We're and trying to keep our pods about 45 minutes. Right yeah. now, where are we at right now? We are at 42 minutes. 42 minutes, okay. So, so about three minutes left. I do want to tell you this. If you are going to go ahead and participate and ask about the 5 um, a.m. club, you already know the answer to this question, so don't even bother. Yes, we do miss the sleep. <laughs> yeah, we are... <laughs> A little bit underslept, even though like we're trying to go to bed by like 10, 30, 11. Tonight, we're going to be in bed by 9, and the NBA starts tonight. So we that's crazy don't. for me to even say. Yes, but. it is, because my husband, the sports shaman, is all about sports. But at the end of the day, what we have come to understand is that we have to put ourselves, make ourselves a priority. Yep. Um, and sometimes that means sacrificing a little bit of this and a little bit of that so that you can be fully present for the things that you truly do yeah. love. LeBron James is not watching me LeBron walk around. Dying. He's not watching me walk around Grand Roos Park, that's for sure. So <laughs> I don't have to stay up and watch him and support him if you know he's not doing the same for me. So. Oh, okay. We're getting a little, uh, little taste here. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, guys, we are going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, we wanted to convey our thanks uh, for you to take the time and listen uh, yet again. Um, thank you for following us. Thank you for showing your support and your love. Um, and like you said, real recognizes real and i do believe that the real ones are here listening so thank you very much yeah we love you guys stay up remember that right now is a difficult time with the energy shifting between the eclipses so stay positive stay strong stay people. strong it's been tough we're gonna get through it i think that by november what fifth uh, or eighth gosh don't quote me on that i do know that it's the the first uh, week of uh, November, but I mean, we are still feeling the the effects of the seven planets that have been aligning and it, it, it's quite a lot of energy, but at the end of the day, it is good for us. Um, so uh, if there is any piece of advice that I would give is to 
try to go with the flow and try to embrace the changes that are currently happening inward and outward. Uh, because at the end of the day, life is happening for you, not to you. You are not a victim. You are not a victim. You are not alone. We are here for you. We are the Robs. That's right. Signing out from Altamonte, Florida. Any I questions, know. don't feel don't hesitate to DM us. We love you. Peace.